Hi guys, welcome to my channel on CD Made Easy. If you're new, please click on the subscribe button. In today's video, we'll be looking at why question 2008 objective part A. 2008 objective questions part A. So let's start from question one. Which of the following shows a center line? Which of the following shows a center line? A, A is a tin shot dashes, and tin shot dashes they are used for eating details. B is like a thin row zigzag line but it's not complete so it's not used for center line why c is a center line c is used for center line and d is dimension line with arrow head so for question one the answer is c question two which of the following shows the curve of interpenetration of two unequal cylinders two unequal cylinders the answer is d let's move on to question three how many faces has a solid hexagonal pyramid how many faces has a solid hexagonal pyramid so let's see the faces these are the faces one two three at the back four five six then when you look at the base the base is also hexagonal so it has seven faces seven faces so the answer to question the answer to question three is D. Question four. Okay. Let's see question four. Which of the following? Is the correct pictorial drawing of the bracket shown above? Now, when you look at this, when you look at the bracket shown above, we have FE. FE means the front elevation. YEE -E means the end elevation. So when you look at option A, option A is odd, option B is odd, option C looks like almost the answer, but the answer, the correct answer is option d because when you look at the front elevation the front elevation is just this l shape with this cut out pass and the cut out will appear as a rectangle that's why you have a rectangle attached to the l shape then when we talk of the end elevation if this is taken as the front elevation definitely the back becomes the rear elevation and the side becomes one of the end elevation because there are two ends. We have the left end and the right end. So when you look at the, this end, you will see that you have this curve. Then at the back, you have thin short dashes. And you also see another thin short dashes as a result of this cut out section. So the answer to question four is D. Let's move on to question five which of the following is not a type of orthographic projection orthographic projection these are plane projections they are two dimensional number one we have first angle projection we have third angle we have isometric and auxiliary the answer is isometric isometric is the only pictorial view in these options that we have so let's move on to question six. 
The figure below shows isometric axis, O, P, O, P, O, Q, and O, R. What is the value of angle theta? So we are looking for this angle. Don't forget that an isometric axis is drawn at what? An angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal plane. So this is 30 degrees. And in between this um, angle, you have what? 60, that makes this 90 degrees. So 30 plus 60 gives 90. And 60 plus 60, we have what? 120 degrees. So this angle is angle 30 degrees. So answer to question six is C. Move on to question seven. The figure below shows the beginning of the construction of A or an A cylinder, B truncated cone, C regular polygon, D ellipse. This is one of the general methods that you can use to construct any regular Polygon. So the answer to question seven is C. Move on to question eight. The plan of the figure above in the direction of arrow F is. So when you look at arrow F, when you want to take the plan, you see how many visible lines? You have one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, three, four, okay. One, two, three, four, okay. One, two, so A and D, they are odd. So let's con continue to check if there is any hidden detail. Now, when you look at the base, there's a cutout section. And when you trace it to the plan, the cutout falls in between two visible lines. So you locate two visible lines and locate the hidden details. So the answer is question, the answer is option B. Answer to question eight is option B. Question nine, which of the following is required to construct the polygon below? A, distance across flats, no. Distance across corners, no. Internal angle, no. The answer is option D. Length of one side is required to construct this polygon. Question 10. Which of the following drawing instruments is used to reproduce shapes? Compass is used to draw angle. Template is used to reproduce shapes. Divider is to use to transfer measurement. And protractor is used to measure angles. So answer to question 10 is B. Question 11. Which of the following curves has eccentricity greater than one? S, C, or Q? S, C, or U? Now, when you look at this question, the first one is, is an ellipse. This is an ellipse. For an ellipse, from an ellipse, you move on to a parabola. From a parabola, you move on to hyperbola. So the answer to question 11 is the last one, which is option C. This should be B. This should be option B. It's not showing on this question, but this should be B. So the answer is the last one. The first one is ellipse. The second one from ellipse, when you keep moving, it, it opens to a parabola. From a parabola, it opens to hyperbola. So the answer is the last, um, the last curve. So let's move on to question 12. Okay, the last curve is option U, option U. So the answer is D. Answer to question 11 is D. Now I move on to question 12.
if the crank OK in the diagram below moves anticlockwise, that is, if it moves towards this direction, the link KP will A, rotate at Q, B, slide towards K, C, slide towards P, D, remain stationary. So now we have the crank. This is OK. This is the crank. And this is the link or the rod. This is the link KP. Now, if the link KP, if the, if the rod, the crank OK moves anticlockwisely, if it moves anticlockwisely, what will happen to KP? Now, when it moves in anticlockwise direction, rod KP will slide towards P. It will slide towards P. It will slide towards P because as it's moving this way, it's also, it tends to move forward. But if it moves clockwise, in clockwise direction, it will slide towards K. So the answer to question 12 is C. It will slide towards P. So question 13, which of the following is an example of a frustum? An example of a frustum. A frustum is that remaining part when you truncate from um, a solid. The remaining part of the object is called a frustum. So a water bucket is a very good example. So the answer to question 13 is a, move on to question 14. The development of a closed square prism, we have A, four rectangles and four squares, B, two squares and two rectangles, C, four rectangles and two squares, D, four squares and two rectangles. When we say development, Development means when you unfold a two dimension, a three dimensional um, object into a 2D shape. Now, when you unfold a square prism, a closed square prism, you have this. So you have one, two, three, four rectangles and two squares. These are the squares that covers the top and the bottom. So the answer to question 14 is four rectangles and two squares. That is option C, option C. Question 15. If a length of one meter on land is represented by two centimeter on a drawing, what is the ratio of the scale used? A, ratio one to 20, B, ratio one to 40, C ratio 1 to 50, D ratio 1 to 50. Now, I'm going to show you how to calculate this. Now, we are going to use, for the scale, we are going to use the distance drawn, which is 2 centimeter over 1 meter. 2 centimeter over 1 meter. And when you convert 1 meter to centimeter you have what 100 centimeter now when you divide through two year one two in hundred you have 50 that gives us ratio one to 50 which is option c i move on to question 16 which of the following has eight triangular faces a octahedron, B, tetrahedron, C, hexahedron, D, dodecahedron. So for eight triangular faces, we have octahedron. So this is how an octahedron looks like. This is, it, it has eight triangular faces. So let's count. This is one, this is two, three, 
four. Then you go down, you have five, six, seven, and eight. So an octahedron has eight triangular faces. So the answer to question 16 is option A. We move on to question 17. What type of section is suitable for showing the cross section of a long bar? Now, when you want to show the cross section of a long bar, the type of section suitable is a revolved section. So that is option D. Let me show you what it looks like, what a revolved section looks like. Now, this is a revolved section. So now this is the cutting plane. When you cut through, this is the cutting plane. When you cut through this bar, the next thing is to rotate the section from in between the two curves. You rotate it from inside, outside. Now, when you rotate it from inside, outside, it means you have done what you have revolved it. So you now place it on the elevation. So when you place it on the elevation, it is a revolved section. But when you remove it totally and place it separately away from the elevation, the orthographic view, we call it removed section. But in this case, you rotate it from inside out. It is called a revolved section. So that is question um, option D, question 17. The answer is D. So let's move on to question 18. Which of the following is the true shape of the section SS above if the object is spherical? Now, when you cut a sphere this way, what you will get is a circle and not an ellipse. This is a common mistake to students. Some students, they make this mistake a lot. Please try to get it once and for all. The true shape of section S is, is not an ellipse, but a circle because it's a Space. So when you cut it at any point, even if you cut it horizontally, you get what? A circle. So question 19. Question 19. A conic section whose eccentricity is 4 over 3 is what? 4 divided by 3 gives 1.33. And 1.33 is above the benchmark. The benchmark is what? Parabola, which is one. One is unity. So when it's above one, it's what? Hyperbola. But when it's below one, it's an ellipse. So a conic section that is um, whose eccentricity is four over three is hyperbola. Question 20, which is the last question for this section. If the rectangular tank in figure two above, this is figure two, we have a rectangular tank, is projected in first angle. The view X in figure one represents surface JKML, GHEF, GFKG, EFKM. Now, in this type of question, we're not told or shown where the position of the front elevation is. I may decide to put my arrow here to indicate the front elevation. And if this is my front, I'll take this as, as my rear, then I'll take this as my end. I'll have this as left end and this as my right end. Now, in figure one, this position, this arrangement is in first angle where you have the front the plan and the end. So what we are looking for is X and the X must be end elevation. So I'll go with J, K, M, L, which is option A.